Welcome to Super Comfy. Today, I just wanted to show you my one 2.2 image video workflow that can generate high resolution videos using a regular consumer GPU. So let me show you some of the results I got. So here I was just going to generate a Force Unleashed style video game shot. And as you can see, the action and the running is pretty good. Here I put another video game just to see how it would handle first person view and it looks decent. And then here I wanted to do a little bit more of a complicated shot, I'll try to see if it can pan around and generate a whole bunch of content that's not in the starting image and it looks decent. And then here I was trying to see how it does with specific actions. And it actually didn't do very good because I prompted for the girl to hit the guy because he's way too close, but she kind of just pushed him away. So that's fine. And here I got a screenshot of the Batman movie and then just wanted to make a basic shot of him jumping off the building, which to me looks pretty badass and cinematic. And finally here, it's my favorite. If you have a really simple shot, then you can get extremely sharp details. So let me just zoom in. Maybe too sharp. Um, but with interpolation, you're going to get really, really good details and motion from one 2.2. So let's go back to the workflow. So I'm actually generating a new pass of the lightsaber scene so you might have seen it comes in three stages we have a low pass a high pass and then the upscaled final pass so i set it in the wrong order it's actually high noise and then low noise and then low noise again but at a higher resolution so we're waiting on for that upscale pass to finish but what's important is, as usual, you want to start with your first frame and then write as descriptive as a prompt as you possibly can, um, especially ones that have descriptors of motion, like fast pace, because if you just have generic, very vague prompts, it's going to be more slow motion and not look as good. Um, the negative prompt only matters for the high noise pass because it's the only one that we're using with CFG enabled. So the other ones have CFG disabled because we are using the Lightning LoRa down here. So after you put your prompt, after you put your LoRas, then you can click on whether you want to generate the low pass and upscale pass. So usually I turn them off at first because I want to see what the high noise looks like. And then if the high noise looks good, then I would toggle the lower noise. And then if that looks good too, then I go for the final upscale and interpolation. So up in this area, I have a bunch of sigmas. And these sigmas control how the model denoises. And if you would like a video on how to make your own Sigma curves, then just leave a comment and then I'll be on it. So here I have four steps and two steps and then 16 step versions. So, so this one is meant to be used with no fast LoRa with CFG enabled. And it's going to take, uh, so normal is four steps with CFG. That's like eight steps. So it's 16 is 32. So I think that's gonna take eight times as long to generate. So I don't think most people have the patience for that. Oh, I think we're about to get the high res and high FPS pass. Uh, anyway, so if you wanna change from to the fourth step, you would just drag. So this one's a fourth step high motion. So it's the only one there. So you just drag on up and I have right here two step for the second pass. 
and then for the third pass of four steps so you could change the four plus four or you can do two plus four like i have it um oh finally we're about to load it up here we have some important settings such as block swap and torch compile so if you don't have the correct fpa models so right here i put rtx 3080 um, or rtx 3000 series cards you want to use the e5 m2 quantization version of the fpa and then if you have rtx 4000 or 5000 plus then you can use any quantization but e4 m3 fn is better quality um, so you pick that but other than that, the only special model that you should get to me is the 2x upscale model. This model is only 8 megabytes, and it works really fast, and it works really well for video too, which I'm surprised, as you can see. So for more basic prompts like this, it's going to be more cinematic, slow motion-y, um, but for any regular shots, so depending on what input frame you put, it's gonna pretty much determine the motion of the scene so earlier i put in a cockpit and uh, it will give you fast pace uh, flying if you ask for it to get fast pace flying but over here in the model loaders is important too that you want to select the correct attention mode because if you don't have sage attention then it's not going to work so you have to change back to sdpa for both of them but if you have an RTX 5000 series card, then you have to you can use Sage Attention 3, which offers even more improvements in terms of speed. And of course, if you have enough VRAM, you want to turn off block swap or decrease it quite a bit. So I have it on max because I don't have enough VRAM. Uh, I don't think I talked about the resolution. The base res is the high noise and low noise pass the first pass and the final res is what the base of the high res what we're using so 0.75 means just 0.75 uh, megapixels um, basically it means it's around in between 480p and 1080p actually no 720p yeah because 720p is 0.9 megapixels about so you want to set this as high as you can and then lower it as you get out of, out of memory errors. And for the base res, I think 0.18 is a really good starting point. So you could increase it if you want more detail, but it will take more time. But other than that, you can set the seed here. And I think that's all to cover. If you don't want to use the upscale model, you can simply just delete this node or delete this node if you don't want frame interpolation. Because sometimes I don't like it, it makes the video look worse. So I just bypass it. But if you guys enjoyed this video and would like more videos like this, make sure you guys leave a comment and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.